Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part four of our series on making a custom 3D object through coding in Unity. In our last video, I talked a little bit about how it's important that these two triangles are sharing the vertices on this edge. And in this video, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and discuss why that's so important. In a mesh, the triangles array determines where each face of a model appears, but pretty much all the other information about that mesh is going to be tied to its vertices. Beyond vertices and triangles, there are several other arrays that go into a mesh, including normals, several sets of UVs which are used by things like texture maps, there are tangents, bone weights which are used for animations, as well as vertex colors. In each of these arrays, each piece of information will tie directly to a vertex. For an example, let's look at normals. Normals tell us which way a particular vertex is facing, mostly for the purposes of lighting. In most cases, a normal is going to be perpendicular to a triangle that it's helping to form. So for our mesh object here, we haven't actually set normals, which creates some kind of funky light situations. If I go back to the shaded mode here so we can see it a little bit more clearly, we can see that our light is pointing actually kind of almost directly down, yet it's got kind of a shaded look to it. And as we rotate this on the x-axis here, we'll see that it actually starts to kind of lighten up if we move it this way, yeah, we see it like lightens up as it's pointing down. And this is because we did not set the normals for our object. So each of these vertices is kind of set arbitrarily um, based on what Unity will do for its default, which creates this kind of weird lighting situation. What we can do, however, if we stop this and we jump over to Mono Develop, is Unity meshes actually have a method included in them called recalculate normals. So we can add mesh.recalculateNormals to our create mesh method. And what this will do is Unity will look at each vertex in the model, see which triangles it's a part of, and calculate its normal based on those triangles. We could also set this manually. However, in 99% of cases, you're not going to need to do that, unless you're trying to do something very specific with your lighting. So if we save that and jump back to Unity, we hit play now, we'll see that that's being lit a little bit better. And when we rotate it, that definitely reflects. Now this is more following the angle of this light. So it's getting more direct light there. And then as we start to face away from it again, the face darkens. So that's the kind of look we're actually going for with this. And that's because we're setting those normals on those individual vertices. Now, the big takeaway here is that triangles themselves don't inherently know which way they're facing in terms of lighting. That information is held entirely within each vertex, and this has two specific effects on how objects are rendered. First, different vertices on a single triangle can actually have different information, and the triangle itself will blend between one vertex and another. Secondly, if two triangles are sharing a vertex, that vertex can only have one piece of information, so they're actually going to have to kind of share that information, and they, that will result in kind of a blending between those two triangles. To show this in action, I'm going to create another class that will give us a float that we can use to control one of the vertices in our mesh. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to create a very simple C-sharp script, and I'm just going to call this uh, Y value. I'll open this up. It's going to be a mono behavior, and all this is going to contain is a public float, which I'm also going to call y value, as well as a public, I'm going to create a singleton reference to this. So a public static y value. And that's referring to the class, not the float. And we're just going to call this INS for instance. And then void on awake, we are going to say that INS equals this. And all this has for a job is I'm going to create an empty object, call this Y value controller, and I'm going to add Y value to it. And so now all this thing's job is, is that I'm going to be able to adjust this float here and things like our mesh object are going to be able to grab that information. Set that back to zero.
Now in our procedural mesh script, I'm going to want to change this slightly where instead of our first vertex here being 0, 0, 0, I'm going to want this y value to change to be y value dot ins dot y value. So that's going to get whatever that happens to be in there at any given time. Lastly, instead of creating the mesh and making the mesh data in start, I'm going to change this to the update function so that every single frame is going to be making this model, which is incredibly inefficient. But for right now, as we're playing our game, the moment that I change that y value, it's going to change in real time for us. So sticking with all that now, we can jump back over to Unity, and when we hit play now, we see that our, and I'll actually, no, I'll keep it without the wireframe for now, but we see that our mesh object appears as normal. Oh, there we go, we actually kind of get the, the uh, wireframe there a little bit, so we know where the two triangles are, and this is the point that's going to be moving up and down as I move this y value up and down. So if I move this down, we see now that it gets this kind of a blending effect. You can kind of see there, if I zoom in a little bit more, you see it blends from this darker here, kind of getting gray, and then white down here. But it's not a sharp, even though this geometrically is a sharp angle, because these two, vertex, these two vertices are being shared, it has to kind of blend between them. Recalculate normals is going, well, this triangle points this way, this one points this way, I'm just going to split the difference. And then this is kind of just a gradient from this point to here, and likewise from here down to here. So that really is what ends up happening when you're sharing vertices, is that everything kind of ends up splitting the difference and blending from one thing to another. And this is a great way to get an effect of, you know, smooth surfaces, even though you're dealing with polygons. Now we can actually contrast this to if we had two distinct triangles there. We can do that pretty quickly. I'm going to create one more C sharp script. I'm going to call this six. Actually, we can't use a, can't use a number to start a class. Six vertex mesh open this up in mono develop and I'm actually going to copy pretty much everything from our procedural mesh class paste it into here we'll be sure to change the name of it back to six vertex mesh and the only thing I'm going to change here is instead of just doing the four vertices here I'm going to make six so our first three work as they do these three right here but then for our second three, we're going to copy the latter three of these. I can actually delete this one for now. So we've got the first three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to start a new line here. And I'm going to tab these forward so they line up a little bit here. And so this is our second triangle. However, remember we had to reverse these two in order in order for that to appear, you know, for the vertices to go clockwise. So I'm going to quickly switch those around. And so now we have the 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. That's our first triangle as it's always been. And then we have the 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, which is our second triangle. Now down here in triangles, instead of only using the first four vertices, we can now just use all six of them. So we'll just say 1, 0, 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5. Save all that. Now we can jump back over here. I'm going to actually duplicate our mesh object because it has all the other stuff that we want on it, and I'll just replace this component. So I'll right click, duplicate. I'll call this mesh object 6v. Remove the procedural mesh component and add the six vertex mesh. Save that. 
And I'm just going to move this over about two on the x-axis so that we can see them both next to each other. Now when I hit play, with any luck, this will, these will both appear, which they do. And so now, this, this quad has these two vertices being shared, whereas these two here. Whereas on this one, it's two distinct triangles. There are three vertices here that are forming a triangle and three vertices here that are forming a triangle. So in this point, there are actually two vertices. Likewise, at this point, there are two vertices. So now, when I move this y value down, we see the difference here really starkly. Here, it's that gradient, that same. It's almost acting like it's a curve, even though it's an angle here. But here, we see that really crisp, clean angle. And that's really the crux of what using vertices in different ways can do for you. You can create very smooth appearances or you can create really hard geometric shapes depending on what you're looking for. Now that we have a better understanding of how vertices are going to affect our triangles and quads, we can start building more complex shapes. And that's exactly what we're going to get into in our next video when we start making uh, faces of cubes. This for now, however, is going to wrap up this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.